Welcome to Tech Notice. We've got another PC. This one is Orion Herc. Now looking at the specs underneath, there's some good things to expect. But how good is it really and how does it perform? Well, we're gonna find out. Licensing Windows is cheap and easy with whokeys.com and if you use the code TN20, you get an extra discount. Complete the purchase, copy the key, and paste it to the activation settings. And you're all done! Also check out their Microsoft Office 19 license and use the same code TN20 for the extra discount. Check out whokeys.com in the video description below. This is probably one of the heaviest ones I have tested. Looks like there's quite a lot of metal or heatsink in there, we'll find that out. So, we have a HDMI cable, your Visa mount, and your power cord, which is 119.7 watts. Okay, let's turn this PC on and then see what it's made of. Okay, the PC is set up, it's downloading these updates here, and uh, I wish I could, I could pause it somehow, but that takes forever for some reason. So our CPU scores are gonna be slightly off, just so you know. But then let's take a look at the specs of the PC. We have the Ryzen 9 7940HS CPU, very powerful, eight core, 16 thread CPU. And I think this is gonna go up to 65 watts. We're gonna take a look at that one. And I believe 5.1 gigahertz, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, there we go, look at it, 5.2 actually there already clocking, so quite fast. 32 gigs of RAM, 5600 megahertz, DDR5, SSD, Kingston, something, something? No idea which that one is. We're gonna test the speed in a minute. One terabyte there. We've got, oh, that is interesting. This is a 2.5 gigabit ethernet controller, but I believe the spec said it's one gigabit. So it's got a gigabit and a 2.5 gigabit LAN in the back, which is nice. And then an integrated AMD Radiance 780M graphics. Now then, inside this room is 26.8 degrees. Let's open Cinebench, multi-call test, and let's take a look. Whoa, 66 watts, 75 watts. As you can see, it's still sticking to about 77 degrees at 27 degrees almost in the room. The cooling seems very, very good. All eight cores are going 4.5 plus 4.6 almost, some of them gigahertz there. I'm just looking at the specs there that AMD says the default TDP should be 35 to 54 watts for the 7940HS. This one pulled 75. For some reason, this Orion has got it unlocked or has insane PBO enabled there. That's absolutely insane. 15,000 points, and I believe we can get a little bit better if we didn't have other stuff running in the background. But that makes me want to go into the BIOS before we take any four shutdown. And then turn it back on. So as you can see, power limit is set to performance out of the box. It's not quiet, it's not balanced performance. That means that it's probably pushing it more than 54 watts what AMD suggests. Hyperthreading enabled, core performance boost on. So it looks like my unit actually came with the performance mode where we can push 75 watts through. It's insane. And I can't believe we didn't clock. Whoa. Did you hear that? Oh no, please don't do updates. No, no, no. Ah, oh, it's gonna do the updates. Well then, enough of the updates. We know that the PC performed pretty well, but what we don't know is what's the PC like from the inside. Let's take a look at the IO of this. So we've got the DC port, USB 4, two display outputs, HDMI and display port two 5 gig USB type A ports, one gigabit and one 2.5 gigabit LAN port. An exhaust grill in there. They haven't painted it black, it's all copper. Then on right side, we have a Kensington lock. On the left side, we have an intake grill as well. And in the front, we've got a big Herc sticker. We've got a headphone jack, another USB 4 type C port in the front, two 5 gigabit type A's and then one USB type A port there and a power button which is nice and rubbery so it's a little bit different texture than the rest. So we can see four screws on the bottom there to open up this and these hold the feet on as well. There's a little rubber latch in there so that's where you pull it to want to remove the bottom cover. Very interesting screws, very big heads and skinny screws. You need Philips one for this. Okay. Here we can see a little mesh filter for the fan and then a big heat sink above here as well as a fan that blows the air down. No, up. So this is the bottom of the device. 
it blows it towards the upside of it. Then some more tiny screws coming on the bottom. Now this panel should be coming off. Okay, so there is a little bit of a thermal pad in here that went onto there. So interestingly, it's not a full length one. So this only goes over the controller that's on this side of the SSD and not the whole NAND chips are cooled. That little chassis fan connector goes onto there. We've got two RAM sticks here. On their website, this is an Indiegogo listing. They say, we only use brand new memory from industry recognized Kingston and Crucial. This is not crucial here. So they've tried to put this over so you can't see what RAM this is with this black little sticker. But this is a data DDR5. So this is not crucial or Kingston. So here's our Kingston SSD, one sided. Here's our Wi-Fi card. And interestingly, they've ripped off some of the model numbers exactly. So you don't know exactly what this is. But this is a MediaTek one. Okay, I'll have to take this little plastic thing off because I need to remove these antenna cables. Remember, black goes right, gray goes left. So here's our motherboard. There is two M.2 slots, both of them Gen 4. So you get full fat X4 speeds for both of them. And if I'm going to turn this around, you can see a big fat heatsink. And there's these two over here. So this is probably the audio board, as you can see, plus and minus, because there's only two cables going there. So that's going to power the speakers that they fit underneath there, which is great, great design. So I'm going to just pull this one off for now. And you can see that is quite a deep heatsink. And if you look very closely underneath there, these aren't heat pipes. This is vapor chamber. And that's why the cooling is so good. This is a little bit more expensive cooling solution than your usual, you know, heat pipes, but it is much more efficient at removing heat. So if you take the fan off, the fan is as well like about 15 mil thick blower fan, which is a lot better than what I've seen on some other ones. This is very similar cooling to the B-Link mini PC that we recently looked out, but well, was also very, very good. So if I just peel this fan. Okay, here you can see the big massive vapor chamber. Look at that. Here's a little thermal pad for even the power delivery. Uh oh. And then a big heat sink here to cool it all down. That is really, really good cooling. I can see the thermal paste contact is very good as well. There's no reason why you should redo this because it just seems very, very good. Big blower fan in there. So when putting this back, make sure you stick these Wi-Fi antennas back because they've like put them underneath there on the plastic on the top side of the cover. So we'll just try to put this back now. One thing I do notice though, is when you put the secondary M.2 in, there is no screw for that. So if you add extra one, you're gonna have to get a screw online as well, because you're not gonna get one from that. Okay, this is interesting. I'm seeing a little header over here. So this is where you put like your, like a ribbon cable into there, and it says fingerprint. So this could be a fingerprint reader. I mean, maybe they designed or thought of about designing this power button to also be a fingerprint reader, but it's not a fingerprint reader right now. I've never seen that one before on any mini PCs. So bear in mind when installing a new SSD or an extra SSD in this mini PC, you'll have to get an extra thermal pad, probably one to 1.5 millimeters thick. I'd probably recommend replacing even the included one over there because it was only over the controller and they are a little bit cheaped out on the SSD heatsink there. The heatsink can support it, but just the thermal pad needs upgrading. No, please don't start doing our Windows updates again. So it's gonna keep doing some updates. I'll come back when they're all done. So it's doing the updates, but at least I'm on Windows right now. The SSD speed isn't particularly fast. It's kind of like a mid-range Gen 4 NVMe SSD. You can see we're getting up to 4,000 something megabytes per second read speeds and I bet we're gonna get about the same write speed. So it's not the high end Gen 4 drive, but just the mid range, which I probably didn't expect it to be 7,000, 6,000 plus megabytes per second, but just so you know. Unfortunately, the write speeds are kind of slow, about Gen 3 speeds, 3,000, something like that. So nothing impressive. So just checking the speakers out. Yeah. 
the simplest version of the idea in order for it to grow naturally. Make some kind of random sunlight. popping noise. Yeah, not very good. When it gets a bit louder, there's a, some kind of popping noise in there. Well, we've got to test the PC. And you probably don't want to... Yeah, the speakers are okay. As you can see, SSD read speeds are this. So what do we say about this Herc Horizon PC then? Well, I think the cooling is pretty good. They finally managed to put cooling underneath on the top. The speakers are a nice little addition. It packs quite a lot of power in terms of CPU and cooling is one of the main things. They've really figured out a way to cool the SSDs as well, which is nice. The fans actually aren't that loud. There's just a little hiss rather than a whistling sound. So it's not as annoying. I like that it's slightly bigger than some of the smaller ones. I'd rather have it slightly bigger and better cooling than very, very small. So yeah, if you want to check it out, I'm going to leave the link in the description below. There are different performance options available, but um, you know, there you go, you go check it out. But if you want to build yourself the best bank for what create a PC, then I've already created a build guide that's linked in the description below. Go find it there, I'll explain all the build guides, what to buy, how to do it, everything's down there. If you've never built a PC before, these will be very helpful.